Alrighty, we are back with the back nine of the first round of the High Country Open here in Sandpoint, Idaho at the beautiful Caliber Disc Golf Facility. Today we are playing the mother of course, the newer, bigger, badder, beastly course here on property. And I am joined by the one and only Mr. Andrew Fish. How we doing again? Hey, hey, delighted to be here. Got a little Chandler Fry sighting behind a tree, Marweed throwing a turnover shot, Parker swagging all over the place, Neil Bishop, last year's winner. This is such a cool place, and it's really neat to have uh, a good stop between Pro Tour, Pro Tour events. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a long drive back across the country. This kind of breaks it up, gives player a chance to play in a really unique setting. Yes, this is uh, perfectly fit in in between that Portland and Minnesota stop. So you're kind of just driving the top uh, along the top of the country. And man, staying here for any amount of time here in northern Idaho, I, I feel like I may never go home. I don't want to. <laughs> A whole 10 though, if you miss the island, you may quickly want to go home. Uh, 332 feet plays gently downhill and about 15 feet from the course owner's front door so it just has every bit of personality you could hope for yeah it's a pretty generous island i imagine we'll see mostly forehands playing the left side that's the really open side um, but there is out of bounds uh beyond it of course so you have to be you have to be touchy with your forehand also chandler fry this is low and heiser and burned and don't worry. Just barely gonna clear the logs. Get a pretty favorable skip down towards C2. Hey, whatever it takes. I, I also love seeing the pile of like pixie sticks, life-size pixie sticks on the left. You just know Paul, course owner, is just cooking something up fun with all those logs. Yeah, like that's giving context to how much work has gone into this course. We've seen them elsewhere. This is like a neat stack of them. Yes. Marweed hitting the tree. A little bit hot off the tee, but he'll take it. Parker going slower disc, went with uh, more of a zone like this compared to the Hellfire or a driver from the other guys. Neil, out of the hand. Yeah, just way too much turn on it. I think getting your disc to flat is good, but Anheuser maybe not so much uh, at this distance. Just going to lay up from the drop zone. That's probably the smart play. Chandler, though, about 15 feet in front of the drop zone and drops it in. Yeah, easy money. Keeping that really good round going. Everybody here under par to start, and one of the advantages of being a later card on an unfamiliar course is being able to see like what the mark to hit is. Yeah, how do you, so as Andrew takes his putt there, sneaks it in, um, what's your take on knowing the scores beforehand? I, I feel like that's a controversial topic. Do you want to know what mark you hit? Do you want to just not even think about it, go play? How do you feel? I rarely check scores, but sometimes it's nice to be like, you know, I'm, I'm a few down here. Is that good, or do I need to really press down the stretch? You know, you don't want to play yourself out of it by being really passive in round one. But there's also no reason to, to feel bad if everybody else is kind of staying around the same mark. Parker continuing that hot stretch we saw in the front. Just, I mean, he's just dialed. Um, I'm assuming he's not checking scores, but if he did, he would realize he is quickly running up the leaderboard, him and Chandler both. Yeah, at this point in the day, eight was the mark in. Max Rogetnik, uh, who, who I'm not surprised is just going to put together like solid, unspectacular shots uh, to string together for a really, really good round. That's what this course demands. It's not highlights. Par, uh, par three here on the hole 11. This one is just as straightforward as it gets on this course, I think. In like literally, you're throwing a 320 foot straight shot, ideally just checking up before the pin. Um, any danger to speak of here? It's the gap. Yeah. You have to get through the gap. Yeah. Uh, everybody here has absolutely the distance to put a mid or a fairway at 330, but you can't afford to not be putting at this. Very true. Um, the like arena style green here is kind of interesting. If you push long, you could have a uh, just a, a tricky angle to putt from, especially for these big tall boys right here. Me, doesn't really affect me, but the the power lines also, oh my God, I didn't mention it. I don't know if it's ever been hit, but it feels like every disc is right on those things. Uh, I'm kind of just editing them out of my field, <laughs> field division yeah. and saying, ah, oh, there's no way I couldn't hit that. Yeah. Chandler with a really good shot. Marweed also dragging it flat through the gap. A little bit of wind lift and stuff. I like that at least. Oof, good tree. Yeah. 
that thing was smushed there pretty good. Parker now going back to this green, kind of overstable mid-range she's been leaning on all day. Uh, I think it's a quake. Is it? It kind of flies like a quake. I, I, I was think thinking it is. He's slamming on it. Right? Yeah. It's, it's nice to be able to throw a full swing, especially through a gap like this. You don't want to be babying it and trying to play multiple angles. Yeah. Neil, Neil. going to get tagged down to the right side. This leaves zone approach. And Easy well peasy. executed. Yeah. Yeah, once you're up on this shelf, it feels like you're going to make the putt. There's, it's difficult to be more than 25 feet away. And now that we've seen all of those tee shots, uh, nobody on this card acing but two in the field. Got to give a really? holler to Caleb Joyner and Liam Hernberg. Uh, Liam. Never have to putt. That's the critical part of scoring out here, I think, especially if your putt's feeling bad. Two aces, though. Honestly, I'm not that shocked to hear this. feels like the one that would get it. Sure. Yeah. Like, the the smart play is ace run it. <laughs> yeah, as, yeah. as we saw Marweed and Fry both go a little bit long. No problems on the putt, though. So, I, for some context on the round... I was anticipating a little bit of a slow round. Lots of woods, lots of area to find some trouble. The round blew by. We faced no backups, no resistance, until after this hole. Hole 12 is a doozy. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, the second half of the hole, not that bad. It's kind of a short leg af after you get to the turn, but I think this is the most demanding tee shot on the course. You don't have the benefit of like the extra stroke of a par five. You have a complex shape to work with. You're exposed to the wind. It's really hard to figure out whether this is a forehand, a backhand, where the wind is going to take it. Yeah, so the after you make the gap, too, it kind of bends up to the right, but not aggressively. It's kind of a gentle bend until you get all the way out here. So a sidearm could pinch you a little bit on the right, whereas the backhand, if it leaks left, makes this approach through this gauntlet just much longer than you'd ever want it to be. Similar, it, this, this green kind of reminds me of hole one, but mirrored, in that it's uh, kind of corkscrewing up to the right with a set of trees that you're trying to get past like 30 feet above the ground line. Chandler, not in love with it. Yeah, leaks off to the left. Looks like his front foot just didn't come down strong, mm -hmm. and that made him throw it with very upper body. Marweed, I like the idea of this, but that's going to drag into the, the trees on the right side. Probably forces him to throw uh, a shot that's attacking the green, but not going to get to it. Oof, Parker looking to go boom, boom on the sidearm. You can feel it just looking at his body. Not ideal spot to be done. And Neil, that's how you do it. Pushing it straight with the backhand. Even that tree hit isn't going to hurt him badly. Yeah. I think it should leave backhand turnover that has potential to get up there. How about this shot from Chandler, though? Yeah, there is a mandatory on the right. Chandler able to beat that. I don't think it's super in play as long as you're not being a bozo. Uh, and it, it's it's simply there to prevent you being able to play up 18's fairway Absolutely. and cheat the hole. Yeah. Parker now getting going to have to get aggressive to save par. Wow, that is a skinny <laughs> line. From down at the bottom, that's above the basket. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Like, A, that he was able to throw that. B, that it fought through everything <laughs> to be, yeah. you know, something of a makeable putt. Marweed off to the left side, probably circle two. Yeah, sim similar-ish distance. Um, maybe a little more technical of a putt, though. Going sidearm, it, it really is a tight angle. Once you crest that little uh, the corner of trees there to get in. Corey, I, are we expecting him to make this somehow? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Anytime he lines up with his body all corked over like that, I'm expecting him to go in. Yeah, yeah. The good dedicated Anheuser angle. Neil able to chip up. Going to make pars very routine. Uh, Marweed's his third now. Pretty look. And just high, committed off the band, online. You can't be too mad about that from distance. Yeah, it made the chains shimmy a little bit, but Parker with the remarkable par save. Wow. That's that's insane to get up and down from in the bushes down. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and, and as good as his round is right now, you gotta keep that momentum going. Uh you don't wanna give you don't wanna give a stroke back because you screwed up necessarily. Yeah, I feel like bogey free out here, and that's what he's chasing at this point, him and Chandler both, is is like, uh, that's like on your checklist of accomplishments out here. Just like not finding trouble is so tough out here. And look at the spin going from low to high. 
meaty part of the chain. So you can, he's trying to body English that thing in the back. Yeah, I really like that, that that would have been in the catch zone for another 10 feet. But the United States Disc Golf Championship. A tournament with history unmatched in the disc golf world. Oh, you bet! Colin Hanley is on fire. Talk about giving the crowd a show. What a performance from Kyle Klein. Again in Bergen. This kid is unbelievable. Oh my God! Alrighty, and we are back for hole 13. Woo! This one is par five, 612 feet, and about nine feet wide off the tee. Yeah, don't be fooled by that 612. This hole has some teeth. You need to push a drive through the gap, which is not easy, yeah, no. and then get it to run up the hill to the left, which is not easy. And it's a pretty complex fairway shape. Like, you are not gonna be able to throw single angle shots here and succeed. And then the basket perched way off to the right of where the actual fairway is, which means that your approach is gonna have to have to have shape and touch to stay up here. Yeah, it's kind of another one of these par fives where if you can make the gap, it, it starts to feel a little, not easy per se, but very scorable. But it, the second you get off the fairway on any of your shots, it evolves quickly. Yeah, no doubt. Chandler, perfect through the gap, runs kind of to the right side. Marweed. Okay, he was able to stay in the middle, so I think a forehand up the hill might play. Yeah. And now Parker tags the left tree. Not good over there. And Neil kind of swoops his hyzer and is going to get dumped off to the left. See, now you're kind of just playing army golf at this point. Kick to the right. Now he's kind of going to pitch himself back into the bushes on the left. Um, granted, the hole now shapes up for that turnover sidearm, which I know he loves. And wow, look at Marweed having to do a lot just to get 180 or 200 feet out of that. Yeah, the dismount off that sidearm, impressive. Neil, that's a really impressive shot to me because you're going uphill. It's a low ceiling. You're throwing an Anheuser that you can't burn over but you also don't want it to stall out. Like that's a lot of moving parts to make work. Parker, kind of same idea here. A little tight on the left side, no but- No kidding. Hey, makes it up there. Yeah, up to the flat. We'll see if he wants to take a poke of the basket for his four. Fry's second. Has to go Anheuser or turnover. Oh, the commitment into the tree. He just snapped that tree. Oh. When you're on one, you're on one, yeah, Corey. He's also not in a bad spot either, you know? He's in the bushes a little bit, but he's so far up there after two. Marwee, just good control on the sidearm. He's, he, he clocks himself into those hyzer angles. He's so good at just keeping it on that angle. Yeah, the simplicity of Marweed's game plan is really, really important to how he is successful as a player. I don't think I've ever seen him throw a shot that it's like, oh, I, could, I couldn't throw that. Yeah. But he just executes it time after time after time. Chandler with the outside chance at a stab, you know, he'd love to have one, that one back, but easy birdie, hard to argue with that. Neil now. Tricky putt. Has to <laughs> Neil. <laughs> uh, Neil kneels one into the basket there. Uh, you know, obviously the danger long of the pin, but his putt isn't like Parker's where it's spinny and if you airball, it's trouble. Yeah, really good control. And closer than we thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really did get that up there. He's, like, like we said it earlier, his sidearm is just, has so much force on it relative to like the effort it looks like he's putting in or, or just a run up. Turner. Easy tap in. I think we're gonna set ourselves up for the first star frame of the round. Yeah, good work, fellas. And it sure didn't look like we were going to do that off the tee necessarily. What, what's the deal with that? Is he? Is that an intimidation tactic? I think by that Chandler? it was a bodying intimidation check. Uh -huh. I mean, he's like legitimately a foot and a half taller than me, so I feel like maybe it just feels right to him to just bully me at every chance he gets. 
And this is me bullying Brian. Uh, good to have, have him back out on the course. Uh, just for some context, me and Brian have traveled a ton together, so it is so good to be out here doing it again. Chandler, dude, Paul said he did enough work. We don't need to help him out. It's insane. <laughs> you snap that thing in half. Hole 14, 408 downhill. Forehand and backhand turnover both play. I imagine left side is where most folks are going to be pointing mm -hmm. since that's the widest gap. Corey, this is the kind of dream hole that every designer wants to see where it's a demanding par three that is like so visually appealing. You actually completely nailed it. And one of the things that I really love about this hole is you have the big wide gap or the wider gap on the left off the tee. But if you throw this sidearm down by the basket, it's actually much more congested on that left side. So it almost plays better for that gentle flex backhand or a sidearm that maybe comes up a little short so you're not contesting with that bush down there. Yeah, exactly. A little early on the turn from Chandler. Doesn't really pay for it. Going to put himself in Chan range out in circle two. Yeah, unintentional thrower, but it kind of checked up right into a good zone there. Marweed now playing this sidearm. I like it a little lower to the ground, but, oh, dang, it yeah, fights through, but, you know, you're on the green. Right, and 408 comes up quick here because it is pretty downhill. Marweed got his flat for a long time. Parker, Anheuser, yeah. you see the trouble there. Neil playing kind of an inside, even more than Chandler had, but that's going to boost off to the left. Oh, it's boosting. It's so boosted. It may have gone far enough that, like, scramble might be routine instead of impossible. Oh, and as Parker approaches here, we heard off the tee, uh, he had he'd played a practice round, Neil, and lost a disc over there. He's like, I, I don't know where it is, but that's where my practice one went. I couldn't find it. We get over there. They're within two feet of each other. Found it and his new one. Well... Uh, I think that's the difference between accuracy and precision. Yeah. Then. <laughs> yes, very much true. Uh, great up and down, though, from absolutely nothing to routine tap and par. Marweed kind of obstructed here, having to put a lot of weight on that left leg. Just hard to manage the left-right balance. Yes, especially as somebody who's not necessarily a spin putter by trade. Um, that one did require a lot of risk. Chandler now just coming back up. Just enough effort, doing the minimum. All right, now kneel to save. Once again, having to kneel and able to convert. Like, Neil is putting together a sneaky good round. Uh, like I said, with, uh, with the scores coming in from earlier in the day, you kind of start to see that like even this two down where he's lagging behind the card isn't bad. Like that's putting himself in good position. And I mean, not to mention again, likely the first time ever on camera, even putting together a respectable round, even if you're a local killer who's 1040 rated, being on camera, you know, you start to feel out of body almost at times, especially if things aren't going your way, it can unravel, unravel very quickly. So just throwing very respectable shots, playing great golf and just, playing his game, maybe not getting wrapped up and trying to keep up with some of the best players in the world. Parker with the form. He gets his sidearms out a little bit further from his body, I think, than a lot of like the Greg Barsby style, you know, chop in, elbow tight shots. Yeah, it's so, it's so neat to just to watch how people have all evolved to a different meta of how to throw it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of different meta, oh my boy, gosh, this is it. 412, par 4, uphill, super tight, super skinny, and then there's like three equally medium options as you get up here late. So I think trying to attack off the tee to get to the right as the drone is flying is probably the optimal one, but you never are going to play this hole the same way twice. You're going to have to <laughs> yeah. scramble. Yeah, it's and, and it's really fun because you said there's equally medium options. So, you know, you you throw in right down the middle, kick left. You still got an option, right? It's very Halkian in that way where there's multiple ways to play some, maybe a little more open than others, but it kind of gives you a chance to scramble. Uh, and at 412 feet par four, the idea of scrambling seems crazy. But I feel like even if you're in the middle of the fairway, you're scrambling here. Pretty much, pretty much. 
And we're seeing a little bit of trouble from Chandler and Marweed. Parker probably makes half the hole, but I know his angle sucks from there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. So what's what's crazy is sometimes you get lined up when uh, uh, up the middle, and there is just a little hallway right up, and the basket is framed perfectly. It's so tempting to try and throw that middle line. Marweed hacking his way up, but at 412, making distance. Oh, that's not making distance. Yeah, that's trouble. He's only 150 out, but we'll have to work for it. Fry to the low forehand, and sails past the basket. Going to have a chance at the comebacker. Yeah, good tree. Great tree. Ripping sidearms. I feel like, I mean, in the woods, you got to throw what you're presented with, but I've seen Chandler throw more sidearms than I think I've ever seen him throwing around. Uh, yeah, maybe he just got in a groove. And Neil, taking that middle hallway that I you pointed that. out, very well executed from a kind of an awkward stance. Parker pinched. And this just comes out floaty and nose up. Going to have to... It's a long putt for par now. Pretty routine pitch up. He's able to keep that on hyzer the whole time just because he's a little bit right side of that middle gap. But Parker needs this to keep bogey free. We saw the magic a couple holes ago. Not so on 15. Going to have to settle for the bogster. And if Chandler makes that, we got a good old-fashioned switcheroo on the scorecard. <laughs> Yeah, Chan really making his money uh, from that mid-C1 into mid-C2 range. I mean, listen, we're in, not to say we're in Chandler's homeland here, but just vegetation-wise and course style-wise, like this is, I feel like, where Chandler is most deadly. Threading lines, making the putts, um, you know, that cascade. The, the Pacific Northwest in general is just basically you're training for this type of golf yeah certainly and and the way that chandler plays is a lot of comfort in throwing fast discs through tight spaces very and true. making a putt very true if you're able to do so on this course then you turn the second half of each hole into something that's just cake yeah. 848 par 5 on hole 16 we are throwing we're flying the right side i doubt anybody goes that way it kind of just peters out into nothing the left side fairway can land you near the top of this hill, which is still 450 or so away from a basket as you go steeply down this slope into a built-up green. Mm, man, you mentioned uh, some of those second shots being cake if you can get it down farther, far enough. Um, gosh, it feels like eating cake when you're playing this hole. This <laughs> is my favorite hole on the course. Unbelievable. Just, just, a, just, I mean, it's honestly a work of art. It really is. To take a mountain and turn it into this, 850 foot basically vertical infinity sign there's multiple fairways there's downhill uphill a lake down by the water so i this is my question for you you said the right kind of fades into nothingness is what have, like any more like a, a overstable on the right side blading back to the left side that you don't feel like that's a great option i think it can okay. i think your distance potential is so much better left on the side. left side okay. so if you're willing to play station to station like neil did he did a good job on that right side mm -hmm. and parker kind of is too but parker's playing the aggressive exactly i think that pushes the back wall um but maybe i just don't have enough reps on the course and they see something that i don't sure no, I like the straight line, too. Um, I mean, whatever you got, if it's lefty, righty, backhand, sidearm, you kind of got to get it past this little tree cluster into that next flat to really attack the downhill. Now, this one's eagleable. At 850 feet, the last leg is, like, straight downhill. Right, and there really isn't a whole lot of danger except out-of-bounds long left. So if you have the opportunity, why not attack? Mm -hmm. Very true. See Neil just playing this sidearm. It's going to get... So, in fairness, this one has two fairways. Nearly impossible to film, especially when people are going left and right side. So we got limited catch cam perspective. So Parker was definitely getting aggressive, trying to rip it all the way down there. We'll have to settle for the pretty routine up and down, though, for par. Yeah, those, those trees, not more than 200 out, and he's now framed up straight against them. And, boy, I think a real critical piece of this is get yourself on top of the green. Don't be putting from below it because you can you can be 22 feet away and have to like putt head height. Yeah, those you'll, you'll see once we get down here, those Lincoln logs I've been referring to, you know, 
that's not like a city government job getting those things moved. That is one man with an excavator building an epic green. Yeah, and perhaps we need more of that in disc golf. It's it's sculpting the land a little bit. It's it's building up the features that we want to see, whether it's landing zones or greens. And look at the touch on this. Wonderful turnover sidearm there by Neil. Marweed now looking to chip this thing in. Man, he's just been kind of tagging stuff the whole way down. Does look like he'll be able to get up and down for his par, though, at least. Yeah, still making the degree of difficulty a little higher. Chandler Fry. Don't go in front of the green, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was way in front of the green. That's Ex the thing. Exactly. So the distance really far, but the stance not terrible. Parker looking to just clean this thing up. Yeah, no stress. 18, 20 feet. I, you know, after the tee shot, he obviously was had his eyes on the eagle, but it's when green is on the scorecard, you, you don't complain. Yeah, I think the best thing about not eagling a hole because you missed a birdie or you missed your eagle putt or you hit a tree is you still get to lay up for birdie. That's pretty sick. <laughs> it's, that's always a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Neo with the easy birdie too. Marweed, only one missing out on this one. It, it is very scorable. You know, it's a par five, but it's not the nastiest par five of all time. It's just such a treat to be playing. Yeah, once you've gotten off the tee, it's it's pretty doable because of the downhill. And we're going to move over to, uh, like, an almost insultingly doable hole. Like <laughs> so two, true. 279 after we've played all of these nasty, long par fours, par fives, and you get a pretty friendly gap that's mm -hmm. close to you, and then a green where there's a couple scattered trees, but you... you feel like you have to be putting at this yeah absolutely it, it kind of reminiscent of hole six i mentioned in the last video as far as throwing back over this valley uh, though this one is a little bit more like a i mean an overstable putter could probably work but just your general mid-range shot that's just going to fall right into that hillside uh, you'll notice those epic rock structures on the green that literally he had to roll those down off a mountain take an excavator and bring them back up and place them exactly where he wanted them yeah, that's the next level effort that we don't see in your run-of-the-mill county park. Mm -hmm. Fry off to the right side, just held it straight for too long. Neil, I really like the idea of this. Catch some late stability after traveling forward, and a uh, long C1. Yeah, looking good, though. He's got three out of the last four. Really looking to finish strong and just put a stamp on this videoed round. Parker, mm, yeah, a little bit, little bit of lettuce coming in, but... He's in that range, circle's edge, 28 feet uphill. We expect him to make that one. And Marweed to the backhand. Good spin, slow speed, so it pushes straight and then finishes right up above it. That's good. I love the commitment he has on his backhand. Um, you know, it feels like he's a sidearm first player, but just the release and the commitment to getting that wrist up and out. And the rare air ball from Chandler. Good tree, though. That's yeah. Nice. Parker now licking his chops, looking to get back tied with Chandler after that bogey couple holes to go. And pulls off to the right. Don't know what was going on with his balance there. It just didn't look great. Neil going to convert. Gets him to five under. Yeah, and four to five right here. In in theory, that could give him a chance to jump onto the lead card mm -hmm. for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, potentially onto the lead card for next round, depending on what Marweed does on hole 18 also. Like, yeah. that's a really good showing for Neil when it looked like he was sluggish through the front. It, no question, honestly. He kind of turned it on, started playing his game. I, again, you don't need to be super pro Mr. Gannon Burr, Isaac Robinson, to score on this course. You need to just stay within your game, keep it moving. Don't get maybe overwhelmed by a tree kick, and it looks like he's blocking it in. Parker tapping out the par. So we get our rock structure in the foreground here. I just, it's just the... the real estate we're working with here is it's very special kind of a knuckler own scoggins looking putt going in with the chalk oh my god look at my chalk on that disc though it's just craziness yeah he'll be washing that hand a couple times i think before he, <laughs> he goes to dinner anything. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right hole 18 Oof. what a way to finish it i completely agree this is epic 876 going to start down a utility easement slopes gently from right to left so you don't want your backhands to tail off too much and then there's a whole bunch of options as you're approaching a second landing zone in theory eagleable if you frame yourself up on one of those 
otherwise pitching down towards this pond that plays as out of bounds. And then the wind is gonna rip across that and then throwing onto kind of a peninsula of flat with slope right, down to the right, and then out of bounds to the left, as well as a little bit long. Yeah, really, you gotta be fine on this one, uh, off the tee and approaching the basket. <laughs> yeah. Here's our end of the round next. That's for you, Brody. And this one, I think if it was on this Pro Tour, would be a par four. Probably. Um, but I think it's a fantastic hole for, I mean, any skill level, frankly. But as a five for this tournament, it's awesome. And it can be kind of a sucker hole here. You see these guys playing with driver and mm -hmm. going to leak into the left side, really limiting their distance potential on the next. If you play station to station to get 300, you absolutely can put yourself in position for a birdie. Chandler getting aggressive here, a little bit flatter than the other two, and is going to sneak by. He's, he's a little cut off from where he wants to be, but he is in that range where he can get aggressive. Parker, <laughs> there's no doubt he's getting aggressive. Uh, yeah, Parker, one of the most aggressive throwers <laughs> I've generally. played with. And the commitment to the Anheuser angle is what makes this shot possible. Mm -hmm. He's up by, I think, the 394 tree. Yeah. So if he can find himself a stance and a swing, he's going to be attacking across the water. Okay, so Fish, this is where things started to get weird on 18. I believe you. Yeah, so I thought he was going over. They're just going to lay up from hole 7's tee pad to the front of the lake. Now... You noticed that uh, Neil there laid up a little bit into the bushes. We're going to miss one of his shots. He's going to lay up to the front of the lake again, and we'll get back to that later. But because the out-of-bounds line is close to the green left, you have to just burn a shot throwing short. Exactly. Fry was able to attack. Not as maybe long as he'd like to, or a little bit longer of a putt as he'd like, but now Parker... All right, wristy forehand, going to bail out to the right side. But he's done the hard part, and now we'll be putting up at the basket for Eagle. Testing that OB over there. So now Marweed, you can see he's playing kind of a separate fairway. Uh, really needs to commit to this shot, though, because the little shrub line short uh, as well. Great shot. Yeah, that's unreal. Ooh, good stop. Neil now. So this is after a second layup. So this is now his fourth shot. And that's tough. You hate to see it. All that green in the bottom right corner for his round. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it takes, after a couple layups and that, this is where the numbers start to stack up. So, And having to go across the long axis of the pond, you need to be throwing a hard shot. A little testy on that one too, honestly. But this one, he gets it up over. It's not going to be close. And it is behind one of the biggest trees on the property, but at least he's making progress. Yeah. This now for seven. Okay, so a tap in eight. Neil lets the nerves get to him a little bit, but boy, I, I'm really glad we got to see him pick it up on that back nine. Overall, really respectable round. Jan, man. Boy, that would have been a capper. I know. The entire gallery wanted it for him. You could hear an audible groan uh -huh. from some of the people behind him. Parker now with his chance to get the eagle and really make up one of those strokes on Chandler that he lost earlier. Camera work immaculate. Tight zoom into framing the basket as well. No. Last two holes, the putter kind of not as crisp as we've seen the rest of the round. Uh, in fairness, those are, those are long, tough putts, I think. Marweed, how about the up and down from the other fairway to maintain a four, though? That is a wild, unscripted save. It? I mean, it's kind of <laughs> insane, right? Like, I feel like really disciplined, disciplined play to lay up and then disciplined play to throw his shot to a makeable putt. I, I was just, I felt like it was a great save. And like I said, you miss your eagle putt, you get to tap in a birdie. Tragic. And Parker, with that one blemish on 15, still gets back to 10 down. That is sick. And Chandler Fry going to lead the tournament. Two hot rounds in a row for him at 11 down. Should be noted, too, that is the official course record for Motherlode. Granted, it's a newer course. So this is not like back since 1998 or anything. But uh, that's a, that is a legit mark that will stand the test of time, I think, uh, for a little while. 
Having said that, we're back here on Sunday. So another chance for everyone to maybe attack that 11 down mark. That is just, I would say that's two to three strokes better than I thought the best round would be. Oh, I don't, I don't doubt it. Like you have to string together a lot. Chandler had to make some big putts uh, to execute that. And there's just so much danger if you're not clean off the tee. You see them right at the top, 11 down, Parker Welk coming in at neg 10. We are joined by the man you mentioned earlier, Max Rigitnig, and Andrew Marweed played his way back on the lead card. And I see your name down there on chase card, Mr. Fish. Yeah, keeping it together. Nothing spectacular, but uh, looking to make a push in the next two. Well, I hope to see you here uh, for the third and final round. Otherwise, it was a treat to have you on, and I can't wait to do more commentary with you in the future. For all of you at home, Make sure to stay locked into Central Coast all weekend long for the dramatic conclusion of the high country.